Fans have always wondered what a battle between Wolverine and the Predators would look like. And while there have been many crossovers where Predators fought the likes of Batman, Judge Dredd, Marvel's latest ongoing series titled Predator vs. Wolverine is shaking things up. It seems like the definitive comic to celebrate the exhilarating legacy of these iconic characters who have no qualms about shedding blood and leaving a red trail behind them. Written by Benjamin Percy, we'll explore the first issue of this marvelous piece of work, diving into why and how the beef between Wolverine and Predators began in the first place. Marvel has already published four issues of the comic, and we'll be exploring each of these in separate videos. So, without further ado, let's get straight into issue one. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you, let's begin. Number one, a bloody trail. The first issue of this magnificent and breathtaking comic begins in the Canadian wilderness. Logan used to believe that he was the best there was, or at least people told him so, but right now he's not exactly feeling that way. Right now, he's escaping something dreadful, something that even the mighty Wolverine feared. But what was even worse for the Clawed Mutant was his numerous grievous injuries. His left shoulder had been chewed away, a part of his skull had been damaged to show his very brain. Wolverine was being hunted, he was finally the prey. As he looked back at his hunter, three red dots in the shape of a triangle focused on his head, which could only mean one thing. A predator had set his sights on the mutant hero. The predator launched his plasma caster attack, which Wolverine dodged, but he got caught up in the resulting explosion. Rock and wood shrapnel splintered his skin. Deep cuts and plasma burns made him a leaking bag of blood, which made him slow to run and easy to track down. In his desperate bid to escape, he reached a cliff. There was water running down below, but behind him, there was a ripple in the air. At this moment, the Predator turned off his cloaking device, becoming visible, because he wanted his prey to see him in his final moments. Wolverine managed to hide, but for how long? Well, even though the comic began with this chase sequence, the real story had spanned great magnitudes of time and distance. Number 2. A Job to Do We're transported back in time to the year 1900 in Alaska. Wolverine hadn't had the pleasure of being injected with adamantium and his claws were still made of bone. He dives underwater to find a beaver lodge and hunts a few of the beasts so that he could sell their hide. Wolverine was never a man of patience, so of course traps weren't really his thing, but that doesn't mean he couldn't hunt. In fact, he was great at hunting. Back then, the Northern Territory was a lawless frontier, and he was on his own. Lonesome work, carving wood, he was particularly good at things where you didn't have to think too much. Alaska had too many things to kill you, from charging grizzlies and angry moose to the sub-zero wind in avalanches. But one day, the Alaskan cold added something else to this list. It was now that a predator came to this land. But why? Well, another predator had been killed here struck with numerous arrows and spears, and left frozen as evidence of what humans could do if they wanted. During this time, Wolverine could smell an approaching storm, so he went straight to an outpost called Scar, which was located deep in the native Athabascan country. He usually avoided the place, but found himself there when he needed money or supplies, and sometimes when he needed a drink. At the local pub, a gentleman had been waiting for him. The man needed a job to get done, and with the blizzard around the corner, only Wolverine was crazy enough to take him up on it. But Wolverine wasn't interested. It just so happened that a couple of thugs pulled a gun on Wolverine. Trouble always has a way of finding him, and when that happened, he didn't shy away from getting things ugly and bloody. The gentleman from the pub followed Wolverine as he walked out. Although the mutant wasn't interested, he started to listen when the man said that his son had been kidnapped and was being held for ransom. Number 3. A Slaughterhouse in the Middle of Nowhere Meanwhile, the Predator was killing the poor Alaskan animals left, right, and center. This was quite unnatural behavior for Predators. They didn't usually go about killing innocent or unworthy prey. Such action is beneath them and against the Predator Code of Honor. But this one seemed to be a bad blood Predator. From reindeer and rams to a puma, the Predator didn't leave anything. On the other hand, the gentleman, who was named Tucker, and Wolverine embarked on their journey to save the former's son, who was supposedly being held 10 miles north of Scar. But it wasn't long before something spooked their horses. What they saw was unbelievable. Man and animal had been flayed and hung from treetops for display. It was a slaughterhouse of the most gruesome kind. 
The two men carried on the rest of their journey on foot until they reached a small secluded cabin in the icy landscape. Speaking of which, we know that predators love themselves a hot and humid climate, so the predator's presence in Alaska was also peculiar and curious. Unfortunately, Wolverine found that the Athabascans were among the dead, and they were some of the only humans he actually liked, at least in his own way. They had taught him many things, as if the entire community had adopted him. When Tucker tells Wolverine that it must have been the kidnappers who slaughtered the Athabascans, Wolverine found himself personally involved in the mission. He wanted retribution and revenge. Wolverine charged into the cabin, slaughtering the men inside. They had kidnapped a child, separating him from his father, but they had also killed the people he loved, or so Wolverine thought. Naturally, his rage blinded him. His blood roared through his veins like lava, and he was swift in killing them, showing no mercy. Unfortunately, Wolverine had been fooled. Tucker had taken these poor dead men as orphans and hired them to work for him. The men had found around $20,000 in cash and bonds and wanted to part ways with Tucker, so he fooled Wolverine into killing them. However, these became his last words as a bolt from a plasma caster obliterated Tucker's head. It was now that the Predator revealed himself before Wolverine, a beast of magnificent size, but without the body armor. He did have his spear, his helmet, and a few good weapons. Number 4 Predator vs. Wolverine Wolverine was alert. He knew that he couldn't escape even if he wanted to because the monster before him was a threat to everyone. He drew his claws and pounced on the Predator, puncturing his lower jaw, green blood dripping through his claws. But the Predator was no easy prey. Even though Wolverine was particularly good at hunting, this was something else entirely. The beast used his spear to slash Wolverine's claws on his right hand. Next, the mutant found his gut punctured by the spear. With the spear still stuck inside of him, he tried to make an escape because he knew he couldn't kill the Predator if he himself was dead. Both of them had been cut deep, but both of them had their own ways of healing. Wolverine had his healing factor and the Predator had his technology. They both screamed in pain, a scream that would scare the likes of Thanos. He was never one to run from a fight despite having seen enough blood and extremely formidable opponents, but he knew that right now, the smartest thing to do was run fast and think smart, or he'd become just another bloody ornament hanging from a treetop. But the Predator followed. Just before he could land the final blow on Wolverine, the Predator was overpowered by a massive grizzly. The grizzly pulled the Predator into his cave and Wolverine thanked his stars and walked away. He soon forgot about the incident, assuming the Predator to be killed by the Grizzly, but that was far from the truth. What he didn't realize was that this was just the beginning of what would turn out to be the longest hunt of both of their miserable lives. When you've lived as long and hard as Wolverine has, there are times that you can remember as clearly as a picture and also memories that fade away into nothingness, like part of a forgotten dream. Many years later, Wolverine found himself serving as a member of Team X, alongside people like Jackson, Cruel, Sabretooth, and Maverick. During a mission deep inside South American jungles, the team found themselves facing the same threat Wolverine had faced many years ago. Something triggered inside his brain, the lost memory of the monster in the woods returned. And although Wolverine had forgotten the Yaucha, it wasn't the other way around. Interestingly, this is one of the very first times that a Predator has been addressed as a Yaucha in the comics, so Marvel is officially giving them that name. Anyways, this time around, the lone Predator had brought reinforcements. In fact, Cruel gets captured by the Predators in their formidable net. That's where the first issue of this high-octane comic ends, but there's much more that will happen. We'll soon be releasing an exploration of the next issue, so stay tuned to Marvelous Videos for that. Marvelous Verdict Born at the end of the 19th century, James Howlett soon left his home when he learned about his mutant abilities. Adopting the name Logan, he wandered the world for years, leaving behind a trail of bloodshed, betrayal, and loss. He's been a soldier, a mercenary, an assassin, a spy, and a samurai. Since then, Logan has been one of Earth's mightiest defenders, the savage superhero known as Wolverine. But sometimes, even the mightiest and the most ruthless have to face an adversary who leaves them little to no life. Someone who drains every ounce of hope from the heroes. And now, he'll face down the raw might of multiple predators, terrifying creatures from the far reaches of the galaxy known for hunting, and hunting only the creatures they deem worthy. Predator vs. Wolverine number 1 draws some really extraordinary parallels to the original Predator film, with a group of American commandos represented by Team X. One of Logan's teammates, Cruel, is captured and ensnared by a Predator's neck gun, emphasizing the deadly nature of the Predators. 
The comic offers an exciting showdown between two iconic characters with a focus on their respective histories. It shows Wolverine's transformation from a feral drifter into a heroic X-Men member by jumping through different time periods. The comic is the work of multiple artists, resulting in distinct art styles for different timelines. The present-day art by Lashley and Fernandez captures the characters at their best, while the Team X portion by DeVito and Fernandez pays homage to the era's designs. The young Wolverine story is portrayed with cleaner line work and nostalgic colors by Land, Leiston, and De Armata, symbolizing a time with fewer scars and baggage. Predator vs. Wolverine No. 1 lives up to its promise of an intense battle between the two fierce fighters, offering gore and violence that fans have been eagerly anticipating. In summary, it's a thrilling crossover between these two iconic characters, and we can't wait to find out who comes out on top. And if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one, be safe out there, and thanks for watching.